The following is a presentation of Muddy River Sports. Welcome to another episode of Shuck on a Truck. I'm Muddy River Sports Editor Matt Shuckman, hanging out on the tailgate of the pickup with a good friend, longtime buddy, Andre White, Monroe City native, Mizzou product, uh, former college football player, and uh, now back in your hometown hanging out and, and watching your kids grow yeah. and do some of the things you did. Yes. Yeah. How awesome is that? That's awesome. It really is. It's, uh, you know, I first of all, I like to thank God because if, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't uh, be in this position to, uh, uh, you know, that I am now here with you and to be able to watch my kids along with other area athletes. Right. Uh, so I really enjoy it, man. I really do. The uh, Okay, so we were at Mizzou at the same time. Yes, you, sir. You, I was obviously doing the journalism thing. You were playing football for the Tigers. Did you ever expect you'd be back in Monroe? Well, you know, I always, uh, you know, consider one of our cities home. And yeah. so, you know, you always love home. But I also got accustomed to kind of, you know, having things available to you, yep. uh, places to go out to eat, uh, things to do in the city. But deep down, I'm a true country boy because hunting and fishing, that's yep. what I do. And right. so, you know, me being back in Monroe City is really a blessing because things are slower there. Uh, I get to hunt and fish. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I get to mentor to, to these young men and women uh, in Monroe City, that you know, our area athletes. And yep. I really enjoy that. Now, I know we're going to talk a little bit about your son and the, and the travels and his basketball career here in a minute. But I know how busy you were following Des around this summer. Yes, Did you sir. get some time to fish? Well, I, I have fished a few times. <laughs> I, I, I got out uh, one time with my uh, friend Kenny Wilkerson on the boat. He's a guide for Mark Twain Lake. And okay. so we got out and caught some nice crappies. And But besides that, uh, I fished less this year than I ever have. Well, there's a reason for that. You were on the road a lot. With your son, you know, he had played basketball at Jeff City Elias. Yes, sir. He is now playing down in Atlanta, correct? Yes, at Skill Factory. Skill Factory. But he's made his college decision. He made that known on social media recently. Uh, he's going to play with, for one of our Mizzou guys. Yes, Kim, Kim English. Kim English at George Mason. Yes. How cool is that to see your son start to live out his dream? You know, uh, that's all I ever really uh, wanted once I, uh, you know, I got my kids and stuff. I was, you know, I prayed that they would uh, be athletes, but, you know, <laughs> just because I'm an athlete doesn't mean that they were going to be athletes. My older daughter, she was a um, she was a good athlete, but mm -hmm. she was one that liked to change clothes a lot, things like that. <laughs> but with Dez, Dez uh, was just a kid that just loved it straight yeah. out of the womb. He was, I mean, I really didn't have to say much to him. And, I mean, he just had a love for football, basketball, and it started out in baseball. Uh, so he just had a love for the game. And uh, so it really paid off. And I'm blessed that, uh, you know, he came to me one time, Matt, and said that I asked him about the football schedule. <laughs> and he's like, Dad, I have something I got to tell you. And uh, I hope it doesn't make you mad. And I'm like, well, there's nothing you can tell me that can make me mad. And uh, he's like, well, I'm not playing football. And I had to take a deep swallow <laughs> and uh so i um uh, i said you know what uh, he said i want to play basketball my passion is for basketball okay. and i you know i just welcomed it to him and i told him i said well i tell you what son if you take basketball you got to find a gym and be in mm -hmm. a gym 24 hours a day you know uh, pretty much your whole life right. you know because basketball is tough and he's been blessed he's got a brother uh jimmy that okay. is a, a basketball coach, and he's been at Quincy. He's been at Morberly. He's been at yep. uh, 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 what's that? John uh, Westminster. That's right in, in Fulton. West, in Fulton, yep. and now he's at Lincoln. So Des has been blessed with to be able to be in gyms ever since he was a little boy, and and that's just what he does. Well, you grew up being an athlete, multi-sport. You weren't just a football player growing up. You. you most guys don't. When they when you're in a small community and you're an athlete, you play multiple sports. Yes. It helps you become more rounded, doesn't it? Yes, it, it really does. And I, and I try to explain that to him. You know, with uh, football, uh, playing football, basketball, and track, uh, for me, it it kept me in, in tip-top shape. 
Yep. And, uh, you know, the football gives you that toughness. You know, the basketball gives you the the, the uh, quick step, the looseness, right. and the hand and eye coordination. And track it just builds your endurance, you know. And it, you know, they all coincide to me. But in this day and age, Matt, we know that <laughs> the uh, society has got these kids now to where they are one sport. Yeah. You know, and, and they right. and they shoot for the stars with that one sport. You know, being in coming from a small community like Monroe City, we didn't have that privilege. No, we, we had to play uh, and we played all sports. Well, and growing up, and, and I grew up here in Quincy, and, and very similar. And when you grow up, you play everything you possibly can. And you know, I don't remember guys, at least not you know guys that were that I played with or played against that were okay. I'm just going to play one sport throughout high school. Like everybody tried everything, it felt like. Yes, I mean, and that's what we did at Monroe City. We played, started out in the summertime with wiffle ball, baseball, <laughs> and then it just, you know, it. Monroe City's this rich tradition in football and basketball and track also. You yes. know, we've uh, yeah. we've won multiple titles in uh, football, basketball, and we've won, uh, in, got second in basketball a yep. few times. Yep. And track, we've got, banners i mean for days i think people forget the track side component of that they they see the titles in football they know basketball certainly in recent memory has been really good if you go back to when we were growing up it was really good yeah. um but i think people forget how good monroe city over the years has been in track oh yes i mean our track program has been uh has been really good for since I was a childhood boy, we had the Holland, uh, Danny and Jeffro Holland. Yep. You know, uh, they kind of started it off. And then, you know, with me and Michael uh, Washington, and uh, even to these kids nowadays, we have uh, the uh, Blake Hayes and all them. Right. And so, I mean, there's multiple titles that have been won in track in Monroe City. And Monroe City's rich in track tradition. Well, football's really rich in tradition, too. And I know Friday night coming up, Monroe City plays South Shelby, two, three, and O teams. Monroe City off to a great start. What do you like about what you see from this Monroe City team? You know what? What I like the most about them is this. Uh, Coach Kirby has got the kids really believing in what, what in his program. And you know what? There was a time in Monroe City when he first started that some of us alums were kind of down on him and didn't really wasn't buying in to him. Okay. But you know what I saw was at 6 a.m. when I'm on my way to work, mm -hmm. they he had 20 to 30 kids at the swimming pool doing water workouts. Oh wow. And you know I, I said, you know what? Things may not be clicking right now, but to have this many kids yep. up at 6 a.m. believing they're believing in this in, in the coach. So, you know, I, I told my buddies and stuff, I said, you know, let's just give him a chance, you know, give him a chance to uh, uh, get his program start, uh, up and going and get these kids to buy in. And boy, have they bought in and we've got, he's won a title. And I think they're going to make a deep run this year. I think so and, too. And also might win a title this year. They're very positive. They've got the, they've kind of got the pieces in place across the board. It's not relying on one guy. They can, they can run the ball. They can throw the ball defensively. They're stout. Special teams are good. They seem to have all the pieces for a team that can go deep in the playoffs. Yes, they they really do. Uh, offensively, you know, they're, they're fueled behind Pennywell. Yeah. And uh, what a stud of a kid he really is. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they have uh, Jalen Countryman and uh, Cameron uh, Jones. And they just – they have a bunch of guys that have grew up watching Monroe Foot City mm -hmm. football. And now they are the guys that's, that's – uh, everything is on their shoulders now, and and boy, have they uh, have they really showed up this year? And I'm really proud of what they're doing. And like I said, I really think they make a deep run into the playoffs this year. Back in the day when we were at Mizzou, I wrote a story about you and Michael, and and how the the connection to Monroe City and how you were treated at Monroe City, the community embraced the football program, and then you had people that followed you to Mizzou. Is it still that way? Does the community still embrace it the same way? Yes, the Monroe City uh, community is behind football all the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's still a football school. You know, we don't have Dale Labrie there anymore. <laughs> Coach but, Lab. You know, but uh, uh, Coach Kirby has really uh, followed it, come in and really uh, put molded the kids the same way that uh, 
Dale Lavery did. You know, we're a blue collar town, and so we have a blue collar football team. And uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's just what One Old City is about. You know, we love to hit, uh, we execute well. Yep. You know, the kids see this at a young age, and, and, and the community pushes them, pushes us, and embraces us. And it's so it's just like a revolving door. It's just once one's gone, there's another kid waiting right. to fill somebody else's shoes. There is one big difference. We won't see Coach Kirby wearing camouflage on the sideline come late October, early November, <laughs> the way Coach Lab used yes, to. Yes, <laughs> we won't see that. We won't see that. <laughs> yeah, you went on from Monroe City to play at Mizzou. How much did that mean to you to be able to play for your home state school? You know, growing up as a kid, you know, I uh, always, you know, watched Mizzou games. And uh, I told my mom one time when uh, one Saturday uh, evening, she was out with a bunch of friends just at, at their house, just, you know, uh, hanging out. And I told my mom, I said, one day I'm going to play at the University of Missouri. And, uh, you know, I was a young kid at the time, and she was like, boy, you know, uh, it's, it's it's okay, you know, that you think that way, and uh, and you can do it if you yep. put your mind to it. Well, I was an undersized guy all the way up till I got to Missouri, and yep. uh, uh, so you know, a lot of people kind of doubted me because of my size. But you know, I used that as fuel uh, and motivation to uh, you know excel. And it's one thing that I did have that a lot of people my size didn't have and that was I, I was I was full of heart yes you know and I, I love to hit and <laughs> and I was blessed with speed you yep. know some God-given uh speed and I put all two uh, all those things together and you know it made for a division one athlete it's been a while since we were seniors in high school but I still go back to the night you guys played Highland your senior year and I can't remember who it was at this time but you laid a lick on somebody that to this day I remember as the best hit I've ever seen a high school kid make on somebody. And I will tell, I told Chris Dewar about that recently, and, and I will, I will, I still have never seen a better hit. Well, I thank you for that. You know, like I said, I was, uh, I was a kid that did, loved the hit, yeah. and uh, I carried that on to Missouri. Yes. And I was just talking to a friend last week on social media, and he was talking about, oh, Dre, I remember you bringing the wood. And, uh, <laughs> yep. And I, you know, I uh, sarcastically joked back to him. I, I said, yeah, I wrote a few of them in my lifetime. Yeah. So. <laughs> you can't, the, in that era, you played high school ball and then at Mizzou as well. You had Michael Washington from Monroe City play there. You had Ron James from South Shelby go there. We had a really good crop of high-level high school athletes who went on to play high-level college football from Northeast Missouri. We've got that going on again. You got some kids at Monroe. Pennywell kid can play somewhere. Yes. Um, and then at Hannibal, you've got Aeneas Williams, yes. who, who right now is getting recruited by everyone. What kind of advice would you give those kids, having gone through it yourself, to say, okay, make sure you think of this as you go through the recruiting process? You know, the, with the recruiting process, the main things that, that I think are very important is, first of all, you have to go to a program to where you feel like your family, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, from uh, also, I think that you, you, you academics is first. So it's got to be a school rich in academics, you know. So you take the academics, and then you have the family environment, yeah. and then you got to find a place that where you can play, yeah. and you don't have to come in and be a number. You know, the Pennywell kid, uh, you know, he is a t type of kid is going to play somewhere. I don't know at what level he yeah. has some Division One uh, skills, but I definitely know he's going to go somewhere and play. He's, he's going to play college football somewhere. Where, yes, but again, it's got to be the right fit for him. Yeah, it's got to be right fit for him. Now, Nias, on the other hand, we have a kid here that uh, is a very special talent. Yes, four-star guy, got every school in the country. Uh, uh, pretty much recruiting him, yep. can make his ticket anywhere. You know, for me, I would like to see him, you know, think about your home state, you know, yeah. the things that he could build at Missouri. Missouri is, right now, it didn't show from last week's game, but Missouri has, they, uh, Drinkowitz has some kids there yep. now and, and getting kids. We have Luther Burton, 
Who's the burden that who is a, a five-star athlete? We have a you know a freshman quarterback that we haven't got to see yet, right. but is the reason why Luther Burton came there. So you know, I, I, I see that they're going to have to make it that move. I believe to yeah. get this young man in to uh, maybe keep those guys. But boy, what could Aeneas do for the University of Missouri? We're starting to see the pieces come together at Mizzou to build something big. You know, I we'll see. We've we've seen them compete well in the SEC at times. Now it's time to get back to that level. Yes. Uh, 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 most definitely. It's time to get back to, you know, the Gary Pinkle days. And, uh, w boy, what, uh, what a blessing he was to the Missouri programs. Yes. And uh, so, you know, we have these young guys that they got the kid out of Troy. They have the kid yes. uh, Aeneas. You know, and everybody's saying, you know, Aeneas go to Notre Dame, go to Ohio State. But you have to think about building your own legacy. And, and him going to Missouri could not only boost his home state, it also builds a legacy yep. for himself. And, you know, I, I talked to his cousin Anthony a lot. He cuts my hair. He's my barber. Okay. And so I, uh, uh, I'm on him a lot about, you know, talking to Aeneas about University of Missouri. You know, again, you know, it's his own decision. Right. He's got to go to a place, that, first of all, that gets a good, uh, uh, a good academics and that he is he feels like he's family and uh, a place to where he does not a, he's not a number where he can come in and play and um, the sky's the limit for these guys and and i'm just very grateful that i get to uh get to watch them same here it's been a lot of fun okay i gotta ask monroe city native back home mizzou guy do you have anything in your wardrobe other than black and gold i've I have a lot of black and gold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a lot of black and gold. I, uh, so do I. You know, I have some things. You know, I have a nephew that plays at Palmyra, but I still yeah, haven't right. got any uh, orange and black in my warrant. Can you, can you wear orange and black, even if it's for family? I, I have a cat hat that I got. It's a, a caterpillar hat that's orange and black, and I wear that to the Palmar <laughs> Day. So, but no, I, I bleed black and gold and always have. And yeah. so uh, it's growing up in that uh, Clarence Cannon Conference, yep. and, uh, you know, everybody is so behind their school, their yes. program. And, you know, as we get older, now it's more like, I get to enjoy no the kids. I get to enjoy the, the programs. And what a, a great conference it is this year. It uh, is. What a great and we're going to see a lot, a lot the next few weeks of how good that conference is because oh, there's yes. some big games on tap. Yes, yes, there is. Man, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Thank you, Matt. This I really appreciate always it. Always great catching up. Yes. And uh, really appreciate it and your insight on everything. And look forward to seeing Des play at George Mason. Me too. Me too. It should be a lot thank of fun. You, sir. Awesome, buddy. Hey, for Andre White, I'm Matt Shuckman. This has been another episode of Shuck on a Truck. Muddy River Sports. Our home, our sports.